Welcome to the Comma Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about Calvin Ridley, wide receiver out of Alabama's 2018 NFL Draft Analytics Profile. Uh, Calvin Ridley, of course, uh, considered by most to be the consensus number one wide receiver in this draft class, and he did not have the best combine, and now everybody's hitting me up and contacting me and going, what does this mean? What does this mean? It, should he still be the number one wide receiver? And again, there's a lot of stuff to discuss in this video, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at Calvin Ridley on paper from an analytics perspective. I'm going to bring up some of the negatives when it comes to Calvin Ridley and some of the positives when it comes to Calvin Ridley, and then ultimately let you decide what you want to do with him in terms of assessing risk and those other sort of factors. Uh, the bottom line is if you're new to the channel and you're new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So if you're not familiar with what uh, market share production data is, if you're not familiar what, with uh, explosive lower body strength score, speed score, flexibility score, go to this, the description and all the information will be there. Uh, so starting with Calvin Ridley's production profile. Uh, so when you look at his overall production, he was not that bad. Had a 78.61. Uh, overall passing yards mark share production score since the 1969 NFL draft class. He pretty much hits uh, the three-time Pro Bowl and, and long-term starter threshold. He's on the line of the three-time All-Pro area. Again, 1.5, uh, less than 1.5 points away from the, all, the three-time All-Pro threshold. So again, he's within reason of a very good uh, overall production threshold. Uh, and then, of course, when you look at the averages at the position, uh, it had a 78.61 out of 100. Again, compared to the average All-Pro score, average Pro Bowl score, and average starter score, he's a little bit below what the averages are for All-Pro, Pro Bowl, and starter players. But he's not within, with without uh, like he's not within the range of possibilities of that area. So again, Calvin really does not have amazing overall production data coming out of Alabama from a market share perspective, but he does have good production coming out of Alabama uh, from a market share perspective. Uh, so again, he's good. Not great, but good in terms of his market share data. Uh, and then, of course, you get to his athleticism data, which is the main thing that everybody has been just going crazy over. Uh, he only had a 5.15 explosive lower body strength score, 61.32 speed score, and 41.08 flexibility score. Uh, based on my data since the 1999 NFL draft class, uh, the vast majority of multiple all pro slash Pro Bowl wide receivers had at least 154 or higher athleticism trait. So essentially, in order to be an all-pro such Pro Bowl wide receiver, you really only need to have one athleticism trait that is above 54 or higher. And in Calvin Ridley's case, his speed score is above the 54 area. Uh, so Calvin Ridley has a all-pro such Pro Bowl athleticism trait. So again, I think if you're one of those people that believes that Calvin Ridley has the potential to be a multiple all-pro such Pro Bowl wide receiver, he has a all-pro such Pro Bowl athleticism trait. So... And, and again, this is my issue with composite scores, spark, all that kind of stuff, where you take all the numbers and you put it into one number and then you look at all that stuff. Because the thing about composite scores is they definitely do give you a perspective on which guys tested the best overall. Like they're a good gauge of saying who's the best all around athlete. They're a good way of judging that, but they're not very good at judging overall skill set. They're not very good at giving you a perspective on what their strengths and what their weaknesses are from an athleticism standpoint. And again, when you look at Calvin Ridley's athleticism data, what you're seeing is you're seeing a guy that's not very explosive for his size, but is very fast for his size, and is relatively flexible for his size. Not extremely flexible, but definitely somewhat flexible for his size. And I think when you look at his film and what he wins with, it's speed. So again, his number one skill set is speed. When you look at his film, that's what he wins with. So Again, I think if you're one of those people that views Calvin Ridley as the top wide receiver and he's your top wide receiver, the athleticism data shouldn't dissuade you from that opinion if that's what your opinion of him is on film. If you're one of those guys that thinks that every single wide receiver that goes top 10 needs to have 90 plus percentile athleticism traits, then Calvin Ridley is obviously not the wide receiver for you. But he does have a all pro slash pro bowl athleticism trait. So uh, I understand people are going to say he has terrible all-around athleticism. Again, if you add his explosive lower body strength score, his speed score, and his flexibility score together, and you look at all the other players, he definitely is going to be below average. But if you just look at it from the perspective of a athletic skill set, again, what is what about him? How does he win? He wins with speed. He has a NFL speed skill set. And I think that's the bottom line when it comes to Calvin Ridley is that 
His athleticism testing wasn't amazing, but he definitely did enough to at least have Pro Bowl potential because of his speed score. Then we get to the actual concerns with Calvin Ridley, which is, of course, his age. Uh, and I understand this isn't talked about a lot with Calvin. Well, it depends on who you talk to. But age is an important factor when it comes to figuring out if a guy is a prodigy or not. And here's why. Since the 1999 NFL draft class, the vast majority of wide receivers during that time span, in terms of all pro wide receivers, hit the 80 percentile of age or higher, meaning that the all pro wide receivers were in the top 20 percentile in terms of age coming out of college. Also, Pro Bowl threshold, 51 or higher, basically meaning that every single Pro Bowl wide receiver since the 1999 NFL draft class had at least above average age compared to every other wide receiver uh, before that time. And when it comes to Calvin Ridley, he had a 19.78 age score. So Calvin Ridley would have to become an outlier based on this overall data. I mean, that is the bottom line when it comes to Calvin Ridley. The production stuff is not that big of a concern. The athleticism stuff really isn't that big of a concern either, but the age score is because he's a fairly old prospect. He didn't have fantastic production. Like again, he didn't have elite production in terms of his mark share data coming out. He doesn't have elite athleticism. And on top of that, he has age that is less than ideal to where he'd have to be an outlier based on age as well. And then finally, uh, when you look at uh, some other sort of data points, so now we're going to get into some players that I know a lot of people are going to bring up when it comes to Calvin Ridley, like Jarvis Landry or, uh, for example, Antonio Brown. I think the bottom line is with both these players is that even though a lot of people are going to bring up the fact that, well, Antonio Brown didn't have a great combine or Jarvis Landry didn't have a great combine and they were great, they all, but the, the, the problem is that Jarvis Landry and Antonio Brown had better production. This is Jarvis Landry's production. Uh, this is Jarvis Landry's athleticism data, just to give you some perspective on him, is that Jarvis Landry didn't test that great either. Uh, and then, of course, you look at Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown had better overall production and also kind of better athleticism as well, uh, but similar sort of situation, but also... The thing you have to look at when it comes to Jarvis Landry and Antonio Brown is that both those guys were significantly younger than Calvin Ridley as well. So again, I don't know what to do with Calvin Ridley 100%. I do think that he's an NFL wide receiver. I do think that this is a starter. I don't necessarily see this as a top 10 overall player. I think the risks are just way too high for a guy uh, like him. And again, I do understand there's a lot of people out there that are going to die on the Calvin Ridley Hill. And I completely understand your perspective there. But I think the bottom line is when it comes to Calvin Ridley is you just have to understand that this is not a top 10 wide receiver. And I understand he was hyped up to be that. I understand he played at Alabama. And I understand you're going to have lots of excuses about uh, the, the type of offense he played in. I mean, you have to understand something, guys. Like... Uh, even Amari Cooper had Blake Sims, who was a running back, who was throwing him passes. I mean, Blake Sims was a running back who turned, who converted into a quarterback, and he was throwing passes at Amari Cooper, and Amari Cooper put up better market share production data. Um, so, again, I understand that people are going to always make excuses for a guy that they like and, and love on film, but I think when it comes to Calvin Ridley, the excuses are just kind of running out. I think that there's other wide receivers, in the, wide receivers in this draft class that have much better profiles. And I think that because of that, you shouldn't view Calvin Ridley as the special wide receiver as much as a guy who's kind of like everybody else and ultimately draft accordingly because of that. Again, I, I just think that there are other wide receivers in this draft class who give you as much value as Calvin Ridley at later rounds who have much better potential in terms of their overall potential to become great players than Calvin Ridley. Uh, but let me know in the comment section below, um, how do you view Calvin Ridley? And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn at wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemmetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Uh, hit that notification button so that you're always reminded another video of mine drops and i'll talk to you guys in the next video peace